back on golf today. Story to put a smile on your face. A little over a week ago, 15-year-old Miles Russell put on an absolute display at the Corn Ferry Tours Lecom Suncoast Classic. Finished tied for 20th. In the process, became the youngest player to top 25 in a Corn Ferry Tour or PGA Tour event. Precocious hits the ball a mile. Look at the youngest players to make the cut. Michelle Wee on the LPGA Tour, Guan Ting Long. Back in the day, 14 years of age in the PGA Tour slash DP World Tour. And there he is, Miles Russell, age 15, five months and 18 days. And I believe we have Miles Russell joining us on this Monday. It's great to see you, Miles. Listen, what's the most ridiculously cool thing to happen to you over these past couple of weeks? Um, it's been an unreal couple of weeks. Um, it's been a blast, but... um. You know, I mean, to be able to hang out with some of these guys is, is is just really cool. Did you? I assume you went into the first week, Miles. You've played now back-to-back -back weeks on the Corn Ferry Tour. You went into the first week, I assume, with no pressure because who expects a 15-year-old to play well? But when you showed up for the second tournament, did you feel as though there was a, a, a greater expectation on you? Um, no, I mean, I went into the same the second week with the same exact mindset as I went into the first week and. You know, I played better the first week, but um, I didn't play bad last week and just didn't make the cut, which that's what happens in golf. What did you learn about yourself and your game? Um, um, I learned my golf game is, it is, I think, good enough to compete at the next level almost, and especially when it's, especially when I'm playing good and whatnot. But, um, you know, I learned that... Um, I I kind of just kind of go with things and I'm very comfortable playing playing my game and seeing other guys' game might be hitting it 30 by me, but I, I just try to stick to my game. I learned that um, I can do that. You've got a start coming up then on the PGA Tour with the Butterfield Bermuda Championship a little bit later this summer. Do you have a sense of where you think the most headroom exists for your game to, to take that move to the next level? Um, no, I think I just keep doing what I'm doing and um, putting the hours, putting in the practice and kind of see what that puts us. What about outside the ropes, Brawl Stars or 2K or Fortnite? I mean, you're in the sweet spot of your teenage years. What do you do in your downtime away from the golf course? Um, you know, I'll play, I'll play some tennis and pickleball with my sister. Um, they go fishing every once in a while, but it's mainly schoolwork. Got to got to try to stay ahead and to be able to go and play in these things and take the week off. What's the plan for school versus golf? Where is the balance existing at that uh, stage for you right now, Miles? Um, well, I mean, I think a typical typical day will be I do a little schoolwork in the morning and then um, kind of get dropped off at the course. Then at night when it's dark out, I'll, I'll go and bust out a lot more schoolwork kind of keep it balanced, but um, I definitely probably do a little more golf than school, which is, which is nice. I was struck by something you said in the past couple of weeks about your process when you're going to a driving range to hit balls. I see a lot of players with AirPods on. Maybe they're listening to some music, getting ready for a round, and you don't like the AirPods, and I'm curious why. You know, I, I don't like wearing them because I feel like I, I like to hear hear what's going on and hear the contact that the ball is making to the club. I think that's a, a big thing. You have to know when you hit it good, but you also got to know what it sounds like when you hit it good. So I think when you have AirPods or just some sort of headphones with music playing, you kind of you kind of miss that sound that you can make when you hit a good one. Um, especially helps when you're not hitting it great, right? Because that ball, that contact is not the same. But like if you can get that one good one when you're not hitting it well, and it makes that sound, I think it could kind of get you in a little bit of a rhythm almost. You spent some time recently around a guy who seems to hit it well every week out there, Scotty Scheffler. What was that experience like? Oh, it was, it was amazing. I mean, to be able to walk, walk one there at TPC with him. I mean, just to kind of pick his brain and figure, like kind of learn from him, um, it was really cool. Yeah, I mean, he is just such a great guy too. Did he give any advice? I uh, did. He, um, I think the best piece was kind of just keep doing what I'm doing and 
just being me, um, that was really cool because I mean, coming from somebody like that, that's kind of a, kind of a real, I mean, that's an amazing thing for them to say. How's your life changed over the last couple of weeks? Much different, more text messages, more uh, phone calls. What's been different? Um, last week it was, it was a busy week. Definitely got a couple more text messages than usual, but, um, nothing's really changed. I'm, you know, I'm still, still just doing it for fun and doing something I love. Miles Russell, remember the name. I'm a big fan of the name and of you. Congrats on all your accomplishments. Hope to speak to you down the road. Thank you. Thanks for having me.